Hello everybody and welcome to another monthly vlog. This month I got up to a few things. I got some happy mail, I did a little thrift store haul, Troy got COVID, and I went for a walk. So yeah, as I was saying, I got up to a few things. Um, all my stickers that I was going to do on my Etsy shop from my last vlog, they're all done now, they're all up, they're all live. Got them all done and then realized there were actually a few more designs I wanted to make stickers out of, but totally forgot about them. But I'll do that later. They're kind of more autumnal themed anyways. Um, yeah, Troy got COVID. He was supposed to be here for about a day and a half. Um, he had spent two weeks in Nova Scotia on the east coast of Canada, spent some time with his mom. He must have caught COVID on the airplane or something on the way home. And he was supposed to be here for about a day and a half. The day he was supposed to fly out, he woke up sick and pretty much isolated himself in the bathroom on the floor for, for like two, three days. He just didn't want to get me sick. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he pulled through. He's, he's still getting over it, but he pulled through. Luckily, I didn't get it. Thought for sure I would. I have asthma. I tend to catch everything. Uh, I got some happy mail in. I did a couple of small business hauls and so I am going to just insert that now for you. Just got back from a little walk with Coda and checked the mail and I've got happy mail today. Anyways, I just got this and I was very excited so I wanted to open it and share it with you. So this comes from April Howlett in the UK aka Monkey Montaka. Oh, look at the bird tape. Cute April. I like it. I am a patron of April's and she does awesome artwork and illustrations and also has a YouTube channel and a great personality. Um, I will link her information below. Go check her out. Um, and she just did a shop update. So, of course, I had to order some stuff. Don't tell Troy. <laughs> A very nice little postcard. Um, April recently did Burb Fest, so she did a whole bunch of illustrations of birds. She also happens to really like birds, so this release was all pretty much about birds in her Burb Fest. So I got a couple of things. There were so many things I wanted to get, like I probably could have almost gotten everything. So this, if I am guessing right, is the enamel pin. She did enamel pins for the first time and look at that it's so good april oh i love it so this is based off of one of her drawings that she did for bird fest this little hummingbird and it is so cute it is so pretty i like it i like it a lot and then i also got i want to cut that one Ooh, look at all the stickers <laughs> Did I order these or are these freebies? I ordered this one. Uh, I did. I showed you in a previous vlog that I had tried, attempted to do a draw this in your style of this illustration that she had posted. Um, hers is much better than mine. Uh, look at all of these cute birds. Oh, these are going, I've got some new sketchbooks that these are going all over. Look at this holographic pheasant. It's a pheasant, right? I think it's a pheasant, so nice. And I know I ordered these. Um, so this is a bunch of the drawings. So there's the hummingbird that the pin is um, based off of. And she also did a pin of this little dude and one other one. And I can't really remember which one it was. Maybe this one, probably totally wrong. Maybe this one, I don't remember. There's another one. Anyways. Um, I got this to put all over my planner with all of these burb doodles. I love them. They're so cute. And her derpy burb zine. I wasn't going to zoom back out. They're too close here. So she made a magazine or I guess like an art book based on her, um, the birds that she drew during burb fest. And it's full of all of the different drawings and what the birds were. And I'm not going to show you too much because if you want to know what's in here, head over to her shop and buy one. But man, this is good quality. Amazing. Great job, April. This is awesome. Okay. Anyways, had to share. 
It is Monday, June 8th, and I just got back from the mailbox, and I have more happy mail. Uh, I'm gonna open this one first. This comes to me from the UK. Uh, I'm a patron of Emily Harvey. I don't know if you are familiar with her, but um, I will leave a link to her YouTube channel anyways below. And she her she does online markets for her patrons, you know, a couple times a year. It, I was actually going to try to join it this year, but I, I couldn't. But I did have a little look around and see what other people were um, selling and I did end up buying some more stickers for my planner. Uh, oh, the shop is, let's see if there's a card inside. Let's see if I can open this without. There we go. That cool little print. Another little sticker, is it? I think it's a sticker. Um, this is from Julie at Julie Sophie Art. That's nice. And these are the sticker sheets I got. Little Crystal Witch. And Dark Academia. More witchy sort of, um, there's just little decorations, you know, that you could put in your headers or whatever. And Mystic Moths. Very nice. I will leave her info in the description below. The next thing I got comes from Ontario and it's paints. I wanted to try these for actually a while. They are handmade paints from a company, an indigenous owned company in Ontario called Beam Paints. And I'm actually going to do um, a separate video um, about these paints so I you know look at them swatch them all out and you know sort of review them and talk about them and everything um, but I just can't wait until I do that <laughs> to look at them so I'm opening them up right now what? what an adorable little cotton pouch so the thing about beam paints is that they are um, eco-friendly, 100% plastic free. I'll go over it again, like I said, more when I do the, the, view, the review video. Uh, in the meantime, I will leave a link so you can check them out. Um, but these are the paints. Oh, look how cute they are all wrapped up in, uh, this is waxed cotton. Ooh, look at them. Look at them. So these paints here are called paint stones and I got 10 colors. They were having a um, buy one, get one. So, you know, I had to take advantage of that. So yeah, I cannot wait to get into these and try them out for you guys and for myself. What else do I got in here? Ooh, a little dot sample. This color is Mars Violet. Awesome. And a very pretty little sticker. I love getting new art supplies and things and I love supporting small businesses. So go check out the people that I have discussed down in the description below. Also inspired by a friend of mine who also has a YouTube channel. She went and did some sort of art supply thrifting and found some cool things at a thrift store so one day when I was out and about I was inspired to try to do the same thing and I only stopped at one store the local value village and um, I'll just pop a little clip of the things I got in here all right here are the things that I got at my little thrift store art hunt art supply hunt uh, start with the books here so the store I was in was value village uh, the one closest to me here and I started with the art books to see what I could find, and I found these two. Um, this first one here, I had actually never heard of this artist before, Frank Benson, Frank W. Benson. Um, but the painting on the cover caught my attention. Um, his style, this is six dollars. Um, his style reminds me somewhat of uh, Sargent and um, actually was a little excited when I first saw the cover at a quick glance. I thought maybe I had found a Sargent book, which I would love to have someday. But uh, this is, um, I was pleasantly surprised with the uh, artwork in here. He works in, it looks like oils, watercolors, and he did some etchings. 
And yeah, I just thought this was a really cool book with some great artwork and I can't wait to um, read more about him and learn more about his style and his art and his life. So yeah, that, that was a cool find for me. I also found this one here. This is not in the greatest condition. The corner up here is um, frayed and there's like stains on it, but it's a Norman Rockwell book, which most people I think should be familiar with Norman Rockwell. Um, and it's his, it's called Norman Rockwell's People, which you can't really, I don't know if you can really see it all that well on the cover. But yeah, so it's full of course of a lot of his drawings. I love this one. I actually have a postcard of this one. Um, a, a lot of his paintings and illustrations and um, if you don't if you're not familiar with him he was a master at capturing expressions and a narrative and you know just really characterizing his subjects and he took a lot of his own reference photos um, using people he knew, people he met, and himself and his family. Um, and they were the very often the references to his uh, subjects in his painting. So yeah, I thought that uh, this would be a cool one to give a flip through. The next thing, oh that one was also six dollars. Uh, the next thing I got was this little set of these little ceramic dishes. Uh, I paid four dollars for the set. I think we can get in a little closer here now that I don't have the books. And I actually was looking for a bunch of little dishes like this because these little ceramic dishes are perfect for if you're doing a watercolor painting and you have a large area that you need to mix up a large wash of color. These little ceramic, these, these are perfect. And um, I was actually hoping to find more of these. This is the only one I found and it came in this set. Um, this one's deeper, but uh, I can use this for water, large washes, uh, holding stuff in it. And then it also came with this here, hand painted. It's seen better days. And it's going to be a little palette, most likely. And then the other thing I found that I thought was super cool is this um, jar, <laughs> which, you know, odd thing to be um, maybe excited about. Let me change the angle. So I found this jar and I am going to use this for a watercolor water jar to keep my water in. Um, so currently I'm using two of these glasses. These are just old glasses that I've had for a couple decades. Probably I got them from Walmart. There's a couple of problems with these. One, they're, they're rather small. Um, two, they look identical, so I'm constantly, like I try to have one for dirty water, one for clean water, and I'm constantly sticking my brush in the clean water one because they, they just look identical. And when I'm focused on my artwork, I'm not paying attention to a glass, I'm sticking my brush in. Also, um, because they look like glasses, it's very easy to accidentally drink out of them. Now, <laughs> I haven't done this in a while, but I have done this. <laughs> so anyways, also a, a hazard. But this jar here, I thought, this is cool. So this little lid comes off. And this will be the main thing of water. So this will be my dirty water. And then I've got this little thing on, that I could sit on the side and put my clean water. So they look very different. I just grab my little bits of clean water when I need it. I have my big one for cleaning my brushes off. This um, plastic seal comes off. I'm not sure if I'll, if I'll end up keeping it or not. We'll see. Um, yeah, they look very different. So I hopefully won't mix up my clean and dirty waters. They don't look like a drinking cup. I'm not likely to pick them up and drink out of them. I can hold a lot of water in this so I won't have to change my water as frequently uh, with any luck. And uh, it's pretty to boot. Like look at the pretty little designs on it. I like it. Anyways, yeah, excited about a jar I am. Yep. So also this month, I went through a little bit of an emotional, artistic inner crisis <laughs> moment. Um, I watched this really awesome vlog by um, Jess Carp, where she was included in this, um, it's like a big collab painting with a bunch of uh, YouTube artists. And it was super cool. She did a great job. And then it got me going and looking at the other artists that were involved. And um, 
It's a it's it's a thing that was started by a guy that goes by the the name Ten Hundred on YouTube, and he started the painting. He sends it off to another artist. They add to it. They send it to another artist. Everybody records it. There's a whole playlist. I'll I'll see if I can leave that in the description for you to go check out. They did one last year, doing another one this year, and that's what Jess was a part of. And it was so inspiring and so great to watch all of these different artists and find their channels and look at all the art. But uh, it had this really weird effect on me where I, I got really sad, like with myself, because I, like, I was so okay. I don't even know how to articulate this. I, the thing that makes me really happy is art, is painting, is making art. And I always seem to forget how happy it makes me until something reminds me, like watching all these artists and their amazing creativity and the, the fun and joy and stuff that they, they get out of their craft. And um, I've been spending so much time making um, stickers and designs and products for my Etsy shop, which I also do enjoy, but it, it doesn't bring me the same spark, the same joy and happiness that actually making art does. So then I started to get really down on myself and like I was letting myself down and I really should be working more on my art and I really got all in my head and couldn't, because of it, couldn't really focus on anything. I get these weird moments where um, it's like there's too many thoughts and emotions in my head all at once. So I kind of just go numb or blank. And um, it can get me down for a couple days, actually. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's normal. I don't know if maybe it's normal for artists. I don't know if I am undiagnosed ADD. I, I don't know what it is. But um, I ended up going for a walk and um, just spent some time alone by myself, no dog, out by the lake, um, smelling nature, listening to birds, listening to the water, and trying my hardest not to get into my head about all these things like trying my hardest to get out of my head and just sort of pay attention to the world sort of around me and relax and it seemed to really help settle my brain I don't know how it's taken me so long in my life to figure out that this is beneficial for when my brain goes running. Um, but yeah, we'll be doing it in the future again. Anyways, so because that like kind of relaxed me and at the same time invigorated me and refreshed me, um, I decided that um, I'm going to be an artist. And I know I said this at the beginning of the year that I wanted to focus more on my art. And it's true, I did and do. And then I sloped back into that um, slump of making things for my Etsy shop, which is also really important to me. And I think it's because I feel like I need to make quick things I can sell immediately. A big part of that is probably because I don't have any other source of income right now. I don't have a job, uh, even a part-time job or anything like that. So the pressure to actually make money is pretty strong. And so it's hard to just allow myself the, the time it takes to sit down and create a piece of art because you have to you know think of what you want to make you have to think of composition you have to think about uh, what do you want to portray about it you have to plan it out you have to sketch it out you have to paint it I paint in watercolors I also paint in oils not at the same time though that might be interesting for the future put a pin in that um, the oils, you know, they're, it's not an instant thing. It takes a long time to dry. And people can sit down and do an Ella Prima painting, like all the whole painting in one go. I'm not good enough for that yet. So it takes me a few days to get through that. And while I'm going through all these painting layers and the process and stuff for the few days, week, or whatever it takes me to do it, I'm constantly feeling guilty because nothing that I'm doing could possibly bring me money that day. 
And uh, I understand that that's how art works. The money is supposed to come later, but I, I just, I can't, I just fight this guilt all the time. And, uh, but I did get started. I pulled out my oils and I got started on these little charts, color charts of tinting practice with all my colors going from the darkest the paint could go to a very, very light and then stages in between it. And I ended up with these very kind of pretty satisfying color charts with these tinted down colors. And it was very satisfying. Um, with all the leftover paint on my palette, I made these just ugly paintings. Like I just took some canvas paper and just kind of put them out in these random abstract, you know, and I figure maybe I'll, I'll either throw them out or I'll paint something over top of them and use it as a base. But so I did, I did get going on that again. And uh, that made me feel really good. So that's where my head's been at this month, at least the latter part of this month. A little all in the air, a little wishing I was doing more art and deciding I'm going to do more art. A little kicking myself in the butt again because I've said this to myself so many times that I want to do art and then I get sidetracked doing other things that I think I need to do instead. I suppose it's just a very productive form of procrastination. <laughs> I probably don't make enough art for fear that it's not going to be good enough and that I will have wasted time making this thing that is worthless when I could have been making new designs for products that I probably could have sold. I think that's why I keep putting it off or starting and stopping. And uh, yeah, um, I'm not really going to go over my numbers other than to say, you know, um, it's summertime. Online sales are a little bit slow, but not non-existent. I think I was around the $55 mark uh, for Etsy sales this month. And um, my numbers for, uh, for YouTube, remember uh, last month on my vlog when I said this? Might as well subscribe. It'd be cool to get to 200 for next month. Well, it happened. I just hit 225 today. So thank you. Like I can't express enough how much of a warm and fuzzy feeling I get every time I see that somebody has decided to subscribe to my channel. It really is helping me feel better about what I'm doing and that this isn't necessarily a waste of time. Um, so yeah, again, thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Um, speaking of which, if you're not subscribed yet and you watched all this, you might as well. Uh, I do these sort of rambly vlogs once a month and then everything in between is art related videos. Uh, I've got some more swatching videos coming up as well as I've got more art projects in the works. So there'll be more videos on that coming up. So yeah, thanks for popping by and I will see you in the next one. Bye.